So I'm going to be frank. I actually intend for you to run through this program for the first time with me. But I recorded that whole process in which I actually designed a piece of furniture that I was going to build here. And uh, then the audio turned out to be unusably bad. And so I came back and I recorded it again and uh, went through it again and did things a little bit differently and learned a bunch of stuff about the program. And uh, the audio for that one was ruined too. So now I'm doing it again and hopefully the audio for this one will be okay because at this point, I've been through this program so many times that I don't even know what I could show you that I haven't already seen. And if you're not seeing anything I haven't seen before, then I don't know. It kind of feels like you're not really there with me on the ride along, exploring this software, seeing what it's like. I guess I can't do that for this program, but hopefully that's how things will go for the rest of this series. Anyway, I'll just give you the quick tour this time around. And the fact of the matter is you're not missing much because this program is bad. All right, so here we are, Expert Software's Quick and Easy CAD. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a quick tour of how this thing is put together. All right, so I'm just gonna give you a quick tour here. So we've got our basic controls, move, rotate, and then oddly, skew. There's no scale control. You can scale using the normal mouse pointer control, so I guess they need a separate scale one. There's also this trimming lines tool, which I've never gotten working. And then we have fillets and chamfers. And honestly, I'm pretty glad that those are in here. And then a text tool, zoom tool. And then we have very basic primitives, uh, rectangles, circles, lines, uh, polygons of arbitrary shape, uh, arcs, circles, poly, well, multigons, I guess is what they call them. Later, CAD packages would call them n-gons, I think. And then uh, Bezier curves. So let's just explore these real quick. So here's the rectangle, and it makes squares only. So I found out that if you hold down shift, you can get actual rectangles. Now here's what's peculiar about that. If we go check out the help file, and we go to the interfaces and tools. By the way, you may, you may think that the image you're seeing on the screen looks pretty bad right now. That's actually how it looks in real life. This image has been resized multiple times, and every bit of it is just totally shredded. It looks like a... It looks like a, uh, it looks like a meme. It, like, it looks like, uh, uh, yo, can I get, uh, so we click on the square here and then click on the square again. There we go. Okay. So this tells us how to use the rectangle tool. Look down here at the bottom, holding down the shift key will create a perfect square. It does the opposite of that. So the documentation is just flat out wrong. And I did try turning on caps lock to see if it was sensitive to that. And no, no, it still doesn't work. So. Yeah, the documentation is just wrong, or there's a glaring bug in the program which they didn't detect by release, which is kind of surprising. So that's a strike against it. Okay. So if we select this, I'm just for kicks, I'm going to go ahead and try and put a fillet on it. So we click on the corner and we drag, and we actually get a real time display of what that fillet will look like, which is cool, except that as a CAD application, that's not actually useful. If we double click this, we can get a radius option. Whoa. But that appears to have radius just the top left corner. Like, it's bad enough that I made a radius that's really big and actually larger than the object. Like, that's problematic, but it only did the upper left corner. So what use is that? Also, I'm trying to control Z out of it. I'm trying to undo, and I can't undo. So there's no undo here. So this object's just ruined. More on that later. So let's create a box again. And I'm going to take a look on this again. Okay. Now, yeah, I just wanted to make sure, but yeah, there really is, there's no option to pick which corner you want to do it on. So you say, radius one, there there it is. It'll only do one corner. Wow, and this time undo worked, except that it undid the creation of the object. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this. Maybe if we... What? What the... F What's going on? What is this? Okay, so all I did was click on the corner without dragging, and it... What did it do? I, I don't understand what's going on. I've never seen this behavior before. Can we get it to regenerate the window? No. No, apparently not. Yeah, and that appears to be real, because it, it manifests even if we zoom in. Okay, so again, this unit... this. This object just ruined. All right, once again, I'm gonna make a box. I'm gonna try clicking on a different corner and then radiusing it. Nope, doesn't work. 
And this time the undo doesn't work even to delete the box. Okay, try it again. What's an inverse fillet look like? Okay, can we uh, can we rotate this to maybe put that on the corner we want? Okay, we can do that. Uh, we can mirror it. Okay. Oh, oh, it made a duplicate. Okay. All right, so uh, that's very, very bad. Um, now, what happens if we try to fill it an already filleted corner? Okay, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually very surprised that it handled that. It's bizarre the things that this can and can't do. There's, there's stuff that is perfectly reasonable that it can't accomplish, and then there's stuff that is really actually quite impressive that it can. Let's draw a polygon, and it looks to me like you can hold shift to make it snap to cardinal directions, but uh, there's no option for drawing Bezier curves, it looks like. So that's inconvenient. All right, and uh, that just ended for some reason. I'm not sure why. Okay, yeah, so if you double click, if you, if you click too fast, it just stops drawing your polygon. There's no information here indicating that it would do that. So I don't know why it's canceling the polygon every time I double click. Also, there's this interface. This is interesting. Apparently, we can enter points and build up a polygon that way. Let's see how that works. Let's start at 1-1, uh, 2-2, one, one, two, two, 10 two. You notice something? It's not putting it on the screen. So I'm doing this all, apparently, in memory. And then it'll eventually put it out there when I hit OK. This is terrible. It, yeah, all right. So... Oh. Uh, now I know there's no way this thing's using 64 megabytes, so Windows must be uh must not be using all my RAM. Okay, so that's all bad. Uh let's look at the Bezier spline. 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. Okay, so apparently the Bezier spline is a infinite point Bezier, but it doesn't show you what you've drawn until you actually finalize it. So that's kind of inconvenient, but at least it allows you to draw these long arbitrary Beziers. That's kind of cool at least. Can we, uh, can we close this? I'm having a real hard time closing this curve. So can we... All right, well, it appears there's no way for me to join these curves, so that, that was pointless anyway. Now this is interesting. You can actually, after the fact, you can configure an entire curve to stop being smooth points and start being hard points. In addition to that, you can actually set the, what it calls tension. Which... Now, is there an upper limit on this? No, there is not. No, there is not at all. Yeah, you, you can just keep turning it up. Oh, very good. Okay, a couple more things. There is a color window. It seems we can color things. There we go. And you can put in patterns. So I'm going to show you the most disappointing thing about this program because this is really the killer that makes it unusable. And it's surprising. You, you'll, you'll be shocked at what it is. So here's this box. And I'm going to go ahead and resize it. And whoops, that's not the size I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. And that's not the size that it ever was. In addition to that, sometimes the undo doesn't work at all, and sometimes it produces bizarre results like this, and nothing in this program seems to be terribly consistent. For instance, look, now this thing is off the grid. That's probably why there's a feature in here to align something to the grid, because they discovered there was no other way to use their program. So here's what's weird about this program. Here's what really throws me off. So obviously the software is bad, and I've shown you enough to clearly demonstrate that. I mean, you couldn't use this for personal, let alone professional work. I don't know who their target demographic was, but this is definitely market dump software. This is an App Store app from 1995. It's basically a piece of software that was designed to be sold to people who didn't know any better, who probably wouldn't go through the effort to return it. In other words, it's fraudulent. This is fraud software. This is not actually meant to be good software. There's no way it could be because this has not been QA'd, but more importantly, it's pretty obvious that it simply wasn't made to be good in the first place. I mean, something you have to understand is that in 1995, when this was released, AutoCAD was in version 13. And the interface for that was pretty sophisticated. And it was sophisticated to begin with when it came out in, I think, DOS. So 
In fact, in 1995, SolidWorks had just been released. In fact, in 1995, SolidWorks had just been released, and there were already multiple CAD apps on the market that it was competing with. So really, there's no excuse for this program to be as bizarrely broken as it is, except that the programmers knew it was broken. Now that's pretty embarrassing, but if you're expert software, I guess that's not a problem. But that's not even the strangest thing. The strangest thing is what parts of this are good. The parts of this that are actually pretty reasonable. The things that this thing does that you'd think wouldn't be there if they were making a program that was just supposed to be market dumped. That's the stuff that weirds me out. So for instance, check this out. I can select this object and I can hit duplicate offsets. And from there, I can then enter values for offset and the number of repetitions, and it will give me that many of that object copied and moved by that amount for each duplicate. That's a cool feature. That's actually fantastic. And I have used design software that didn't have that, and I wish that it did. But then, for instance, as I said, there's no ability to difference. There's no ability to subtract one object from another. That sucks quite a bit. It's kind of hard to do any sort of serious project without that, at least in my opinion, the way that I use CAD. Also, check this out. Let's just do a plain duplicate. Check it out. It duplicated it according to my array settings, instead of just copying it once. Because it turns out that the duplicate option actually replicates what's in the duplicate offsets box, which means if you only want to duplicate things one time after you've ever arrayed it, you have to come in here and reset this. What a pain in the ass. Also, if we copy this object and then paste it, now ask yourself, why did it paste right here? Now, let me make this clearer. What is that location? It's not anything. It's not centered anywhere. It's, it's on no kind of actual center line. As far as I can tell, it's located at about 1.5 to the center from the X and 0.125 above the Y, which is nonsense that doesn't mean anything but then having said that we go into the arrange menu and we find that there's features for instance to lock an object so that you can't accidentally move it it still allows selection though so let's see what happens if we put a bunch of objects on the screen select them all and then try to move them with a locked object in the middle hey it worked correctly i mean it shows the selection wrong because i have an object selected i can't actually interact with but the end result does work. Still, why couldn't it just not let me select it in the first place? All right, I'm embarrassed to admit that I did miss this earlier. Under the Arrange menu, we have a Join option, which is able to join lines into a single object. So let's create a Bezier. All right, there it is. Now let's go ahead and join the ends, and we'll put it all together. And hey, there it is. Let me undo that. Ah, good times. Great times. There's a couple other strange things. Check this out. We'll make an object. Now we'll pull up the dimension toolbox. Now let's be clear. The only reason to have dimension features is if you intend to make something that can be used to make actual professional grade blueprints. Otherwise, why bother with dimensions? If the user's just expected to sketch everything, if nothing's meant to be precise, then there's no point in including dimensions. They'll never be meaningful. So clearly they had at least an inkling that this was going to be an actual design program. And indeed, it looks like it does have pretty good dimensions. Here, check this out, an angular dimension tool. So we pick the first angle and then the second one, and then we go up and it's like a three stage. I guess these are offsets. So here, let's try that again. What if we do here, there? Nope. What if we do here to here there? Nope. Yeah. I have no idea how this works, but that's just the point. They put it in there and it's clearly a pretty sophisticated tool. It's sophisticated enough that I don't understand it. And I've been using CAD at least casually for 10 years. Also the snaps. Oh, the snaps. So there is a snaps toolbox and initially it looks pretty promising. It looks like they really did take their lessons from AutoCAD. Here we have snap to the nearest endpoint, snap to the nearest location on a line or curve, the exact center of an object, the nearest boundary corner of an object, nearest intersection of two objects, and then a strange one. Using the line tool draws lines perpendicular to objects. That's an odd one. Snap to the exact center of a line or curve segment. Okay, so these snaps all seem pretty good, so let's put an object in. 
Okay, and then let's turn on, let's do snap to exact center and whoops, wait, what? So how does that work? Okay, so the snaps are not actually about snapping objects to each other. They're about snapping the object to your mouse when you start dragging. So if I select this one, snap to the nearest boundary corner, then it finds the nearest corner and moves that to my mouse cursor. Now this is terrible because what I really want is to snap this to the middle of this object here and I can't do that. So that sucks and they all work like that. So I don't know, frankly, I just, that's useless. Let's see, how does snap to the nearest intersection of two objects work? It doesn't, it just doesn't work. What if we put this up here? Yeah, it seems to just not work. I don't know how it's supposed to work, but it doesn't work. All right, so then using line tool draws lines perpendicular to objects. Okay, let's see how that works. It doesn't seem to. Let's check the help file for that one because I'm super curious. How is that supposed to work? All right, there it is. Connects a drawing or editing tool perpendicular to a line. That doesn't mean anything. So here's this parade of absolutely broken stuff, but then look at this. If we go up here to the toolbar and click on this icon, we get the option to insert a symbol. And it turns out they have a whole library of architectural, hydraulic, all kinds of engineering symbols in their own proprietary format. And I mean, it's the business. Like, here's a 15 pin D sub connector. We have a motor, we've got all sorts of different switches. We have logic gates. We've got, what is this, a breaker? There's even HVAC design concepts in here, although most of these look pretty rough. I don't speak HVAC, but that looks like a pretty arcane instrument. Hey, check this out. Looks like it actually sports layers. Again, kind of a surprisingly advanced feature to have in a program that's this broken. What was the point? Why even bother coding that? They were gonna release something that was otherwise so broken you couldn't use it. Here, check out this weird feature. Under Options, Parallel, we can choose whatever this is. So let's pick Center and hit OK. I did a little bit of reading in the help file, and the way this works is we have to select another tool first. So I'm going to pick Polygon, and then I've already turned this on. So now we draw, and it does that. So it's made a filled object that's offset by a quarter inch in either direction from the line that I drew. That's kind of cool. You can't do it with curves, which is weird. I, I would think you'd be able to, but no. You also can't do it with Bezier lines, so that also sucks. You can, however, do it with boxes. But what it does is it actually creates two boxes, one inside the other. and Again, because there's no subtract feature, there's no way for you to take this one out in order to make this essentially a walled room, which would have been useful. In fact, if you set the parallel mode to outside and then draw a box, what you get is mangled. And if you mess with it, you find out that it was the larger box on top of the smaller box. And then you come in here and find out that there's so many options for dimensions. Hey, look at that. Look at this dimension. Plus minus 0 0.000, right? This is, these are the trappings of a high precision program, but it just isn't that thing. So another thing about this program that I think is pretty sad is that it doesn't actually export to bitmap. You can save as the proprietary format XCD, which is presumably entirely theirs and nothing else can read it at all or you can export to Windows Metafile. If you're not familiar with this, Windows Metafile was basically a format that was the Windows native graphics drawing commands dumped into a file. I don't know that anybody else ever really used this, although I won't deny that it can be imported by a lot of other software, such as AutoCAD and most revisions that I've used, but I'm not even sure Paint will open it. So again, this is a terrible piece of software, but what's weird about it is a lot of people worked on it. Look at the about page. There was a program manager. Apparently there was one programmer, just one, which might explain a lot of things. But then artistic team, there's six people on there. Were these all trained CAD designers? And there was a QA team. There were six people on the QA team. What did they do all day? Did they just turn in bug reports that just went nowhere? Why even employ them? Two people worked on the help file. 
one person programmed, two people worked on the help file. How did this thing come into being? What was it like working on it? Did they know that it was going to be bad software? Did they somehow think that this was going to be a decent piece of software despite the fact that everything they did in it was broken? Or was the whole point to make something bad? Were they in on it? Did they know that Expert Software was a company that made bad software? Were they just completely oblivious? Did they somehow think that maybe they would just fix everything in version two? What was the story? What, what, what happened at Expert Software and apparently Smart Software? What were things like in 1994 when they were developing this? What was the atmosphere in the office like? Did it feel like a failing company? Did it feel like a place that was wasting its time? Or did these people earnestly think that they were doing something important and valuable? This is something I never stop thinking about when it comes to this stuff. What happened to these people? Where did they go from here? Do they feel bad about this? Were there constraints placed on them that made this happen? Was it some sort of we have to release by Christmas deadline? Or is it just that expert software only gave them X number of dollars for development and they hit that amount and just went home? I can't think of many other explanations for why this program would have gotten published but would still be unusably bad like this. It's just a weird anomaly in the world for me. So there you go. That's it. That's my first episode. I hope you had a good time, and I hope you'll join me next time. Let me know if there's anything you find interesting in the comments, or talk to me on Twitter if you know me on there. And uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me focus on. Next time I'll probably be doing a whole batch of games, because I've been specifically asked to do a whole crap load of games by a couple of people, so I'm gearing up to do that. But I have a lot more utility software here to go through, and I'm planning on doing that as soon as possible. So uh, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope I'll see you next time.